We just learned a lot of rules of dimensioning on the previous pages that we have completed. So now we are going to apply those rules to a handout. Okay, I'm doing 9-2, also called the spacer block, and I told you I would do these the first one with you, and then I'll give you a helpful hint on the back one. Um, so for this assignment, the when they created this, they actually made them really close together, and we still want to keep our rules made, you know, keep the dimensions between the views as much as possible. So the only way I can think of to keep all of these different space dimensions in that space without looking crowded is to use chain dimensioning. Okay, so I've got my paper lined up, and what I'm going to be looking at is how many dimensions do I need for width total. So I'm looking at one, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Well, you don't want to dimension circles or information pertaining to the location of the circles on a view where it's not shown as a circle. So I'm going to eliminate that information and pretend that my front view doesn't have that at this moment. Okay, so I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six, which means that I need one less dimension. So I'm going to have five dimensions on this front view. The first one has to be the total, and then the other four are going to be chain dimensions. Okay, I'm also going to point out down here at the bottom of the sheet, it wants us to use fractional inches to the nearest eighth of an inch. So no decimal points, right in fractions. Okay, so I am going to extend these lines up. leaving a little bit of room on the top, okay? Then I'm going to bring up each of these lines. I'm creating my extension lines first, okay? And then I'll throw in my dimension lines with arrows, and then I'll put in my dimensions, okay? This is one way that I keep myself organized because it's just so easy to lose track. And one way to stay organized is when you're doing chain dimensions, just link. Okay, I'm looking right here. I keep all of them in one single row. Okay, so I don't even have to move my parallel bar. And then I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit and bring my total. Okay. Now, before I put in my dimensions, I'm going to put in my arrows so I don't forget. Again, that's one of the number one things that students forget to do is put in their arrows. You want nice small arrows, not big flailing things, not ugly. Don't get all fancy with the heart shape, okay? That's just distracting. We want it to be nice and clean. We want small arrows. Yep, I just wiped with my hand. I caught that. Okay, so you're going to keep them nice and small, skinny. Make sure the arrows are touching the extension lines. There we go. And now it's time to bring out the lettering guide. Okay. Your numbers go in the actual dimension lines, not above them, not below them, not somewhere close by. It goes in it. And remember the rule of all in or all out, but I think we can squeeze this one through. Okay. So, taking my measurements, my total width is five and three eighths. So five and three eighths. Okay. This is one half. I can write my dimensions with that kind of a fraction as well. Okay. 
that's one and three fourths. You gotta be careful when you're writing fractions close to a whole number that you stagger it or you leave a big enough space that it doesn't look like 13 fourths. Okay, this one is also one half. And this is one and one fourth. I might need to go back in with my eraser and shorten that line a bit just because I need a little more space. So that's one and one fourth. Okay. Now, there are a couple width dimensions that I still need. Most importantly, I need to know the distance between these two holes. So when you're using center lines, you can turn those into extension lines for dimensioning. The distance between these two holes on this particular item is important because that's how the item gets attached to whatever it's connecting to. Okay, think about two screws going down and the distance between those holes is very important otherwise it won't actually be able to attach to the other part. So you're going to have to do a little bit of thoughtful um, reflection while you're doing your dimensioning to think about how would I want to read this? How, what, how do you think this might attach to another piece? You know, that kind of situation. So this is, remember you're going to the nearest eighth of an inch. So three and three fourths is the nearest one. So three and three fourths inch. Okay. I have all of my width dimensions that I need. Okay, right now a lot of you are probably thinking, well, what about from the edge to here? Or what about this edge to here? This will work out when we're figuring out the diameter and the radius. Okay, so let's address that. So first, I'm going to use, figure out the diameter of my circles. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and create my leader line. For each of those. Notice that I'm lining it up with the center point. You always have your leader line pointing to the center, but it's touching and pointing at the circle that you're measuring. Okay. So I'm going to bring that out. And create my guidelines okay now circles are dimensioned by their diameter so I'm gonna figure out I'm gonna put the diameter symbol here first okay and I'm gonna measure that's a half inch that is also a half inch so diameter of one half diameter of one half okay with an arc these are dimensioned by their radius I'm also going to make sure that I am pointing my arrow you know what just for kicks and giggles let's go the other way let's go down okay I'm making sure that it's pointing at the center point but I am going to start my leader line on the arc itself. Okay, and then add in lines from my lettering guide. Circles are dimensioned by diameter. Arcs are measured by their radius, not diameter. So radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the outside. That is three-fourths inch. So radius equals three-fourths. Okay. New trick about to happen. 
there these two arcs are the same okay if you're trying to simplify how many dimensions are on this piece of paper you can actually put in times two because this and this are the only arcs on this page so radius of three-fourths happens two times in the only two places where there's arcs okay I know that's a lot to take in if you're not comfortable or understanding that then don't do this just do a radius on this side as well for that arc to finish things up we need our height dimensions I'm seeing one two three elevations so I need two dimensions. One has to be my overall, and then there's one smaller one. So I am going to extend this out. And for me, it's always easier to dimension to what's there versus what's missing, okay? And remember, you can extend an extension line through each other. You cannot cross it through a dimension line. Okay. And just for a little practice in all in, all out rule, I am going to put this dimension outside. Yes, I can fit it inside, but I just want to practice. And either way, it is correct. Okay, now if I did all out on this bigger piece, that would not be correct. Okay, that would just be goofy. So I'm going to put the dimension underneath with those arrows. And one here. Finally, this is one half inch, and this is one and one fourth inch. Okay, see how I left a big enough space that it doesn't look like 11 fourths? Leave a big gap if you're going to do large fractions. Okay, this piece is now completely dimensioned according to all of our rules of dimensioning. My one helpful hint to you is that the, the project, the clamp plate on the back, looks a lot like an example that's on the back of one of your instruction packets. You're on your own for this one, but make sure you find the center points and tell me the diameters for those circles. Also, datum dimensioning is your best friend.